20th of uh, April. Well, up here we're going to move the corn down, what's left of it. To, there's nothing left of it. I want to take you out here and show you. There's a lot to be said about corn at the wintertime food source. Uh, yes, it has a price with it, but that longevity of it and the use of it is phenomenal. If you look at these in rows, this area right here really, really stood up to test the time. Because as you notice, the corn, this snow was three feet deep in here. But the corn cob was well off the ground. So the deer didn't have to dig it out and try to you know, use up calories trying to consume snow-laden corn. And, I mean, there's four acres of corn here, and uh, just straight field corn, no fancy, uh, just right from the co-op. 28 tonight, killing frost. Ground's dry, but what I'm trying to show, emphasize more so, was how the corn was completely gleaned by the deer and you, numerous tracks have been in there and you can also see the results over here of our borasca crop and some of that is greening up it has some food value you know a little bit of turnips a little bit of forage oats whatever mixed in there with a blend that came back up but the consumption, well, there, <laughs> I better keep that here. He's little, but he, that might have been what kept him alive. <laughs> He'd been turned to deer poop. But anyhow, you go up through here, this cornfield's just been ravaged. I've been down through here with the four-wheeler, took the kids on a ride on Easter. They wanted to ride through here. So that's what you're seeing, this knockdown stuff. But. This entire field was consumed by the white-tailed deer. And you can see their tracks in there. And you can also see uh, good land management. No weed residue in these rows. And that's really important to keep the weeds out of your food plot, no matter what they be, because when it dries out in a drought, uh, they will be consuming the moisture right along with your the crop that you're trying to grow and you don't want that. So uh, people can bastardize uh, modern day herbicides all they want. That ain't going to sway me one way or the other. You used to take three cultivations to get corn rows this clean and <laughs> yeah, thanks to technology, good technology, that's been eradicated and um, that sure saves fuel and time because I don't know if any of you have ever cultivated but the first cultivation of years past was really slow and every time you cultivate the ground you're opening it up which is letting any moisture that's uh, captured in it evaporate so, bastardize, chemical, uh, weed control all you want because you don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, uh, but you can see the results of it right there. And here's another nice thing. See those little pieces of corn down there that have been knocked down? That's bird food. Yeah. But, like I said, I just wanted to emphasize. Now, here, here was an ear where the deer were eating on it. And you can see they, it's well out, off the ground. Well, we're going to put it all on the ground today. And I'll keep my eye out for any stray antler. And you know what? I killed does in this field uh, this year. I did not kill a buck. And the reason I didn't kill a buck is because uh, I had the opportunities. But uh, I desi my desire was to kill 
does because there are too many of them. And uh, the bucks, you know, found some of their antlers, and that was my reward. So it's not all about killing, but it sure, if you haven't been into food plotting and uh, you're missing out, it's not, it's not a guarantee. So many people think, well, what's the silver bullet? There is none. You do this for the entire wildlife. And last winter, the winter of 2120 was severe. And all you have to do is look at all these barren corn cobs. Unprecedented. It's uh, just fantastic. So, cornfield, uh, this food plot did its, did its job. It's really, really amazing. This brassicas, some of them re-germinated, or the seed finally germinated, and it, it really greened this strip up. And that's good for the turkey, the turkey season, because it's an excellent place for a bug field. Here was another situation. All that corn wasn't consumed by deer. The, uh, the coons had their fair share also. I'd say the coons must have had, this must have been their outside kaibo eating and shitting at the same time. Anyway, I just wanted to get up here in an elevated stand and share a little shit with you. Literally. And uh, now you can see the size of the cornfield better. And uh, that whole entire field has been gleaned of its corn worthiness. So, it's uh, how much do you plant? Who knows? But in that winter, we attracted a whole lot of deer from miles around. Unfortunately, I didn't find that many sheds. Keep in mind, I'm going to be mowing backwards so I can look at where I'm going. See if I can see any sheds. Heard some cranked up and get the mower mowing. It's a little windy out, but we'll make a couple passes with the camera. Well, you see how that mows that off, and hopefully I can almost do, I'll get this mowed off real fine, and uh, we're going in here with another food plot this, this spring, but really chops it up, the corn's dry. So, you can see how it's doing it. Well, that's going to be done for filming. Well the 21st day uh, of April. We had a few problems with overheating yesterday. It's about 30 degrees around below freezing frost is out there. But I just want to give you a perspective. Uh, 
leave the tractor out there in the field and you can see how vast that cornfield was and the consumption of the corn that was a lot of corn out there and that's what it takes if you're going to carry uh, a deer herd because you're going to draw deer for miles around so it just you can see we've got quite a bit of it mowed off yeah, but the dang dust gets in the radiator and plugs it up and you have to keep cleaning it out but I just wanted to put the tractor out there to put everything in a three-dimensional uh, form so you could see how much corn and how big the field actually is because that gives you a better idea of how many bushels that the deer consume and the coon <laughs> and I can't cuss the coon because uh, the thing was if I didn't have them I just had that much more corn and here's an interesting fact right here right here is where I found my first shed antler and I figured it jumped the fence and out of all this acres where this red flag was, that was where, and it ended up being a matching set. And I found the other one uh, on up at the other end. But just to give you a perspective on how much consumption and how big this field was, I wanted to put that tractor out there. And we still got oh, quite a bit to go. And, um, I mean, you can see there's well over an acre left to get mowed off. And, uh, you know, it's really chilly this morning, which is good for the, but the, the dang dust, what happens is the dust from that corn is so fine that it gets in the radiator and you have to blow it out and it slows it down. But as you look on this field, you can see there is zero. I can't see zero because up I can show you a couple corn uh, cobs that I ran over that actually had corn on it. But when you're going to plant corn and you have a winter like we had in Iowa with over 55 inches of snow, uh, you're hard pressed in, in this uh, after we mowed it, you, you, you're hard pressed to find a, any corn cobs with corn on it. And like I say, we're not done yet, but uh, <laughs> the consumption was just tremendous. So if you're, what I'm trying to get across, if you're going to plant corn, you better plant a lot of it because you're not going to only have the deer in your area, but you're going to be drawing deer and wildlife for miles around. Being this is a learning channel, I want to go over a couple things. I got my ear protection on because with that canopy on, the noise is just deafening. Plus, I can pull this down and uh, it keeps that corn dust and stuff out of your eyes. The only problem is, don't spit in this because if you spit, it gets caught right there. Anyhow things you learn as you go along. Well what we're going to do is I'm going to take you down through here with the tractor and I'm going <coughs> to show you uh, the, <coughs> the, the visibility off the tractor and how long it takes to get down the roll. Plus, <coughs> oh, boy that corn dust. Yeah. Anyhow, You'll see how clean the rows are, and if you did see a shed antler, you, it would pop up. Now, if your rows were full of weeds, then you'd be hard pressed to see it. So let's get on the tractor. It's going to be noisy. One other thing, you want to watch that temperature gauge. Uh, if it gets in the red, you're going to have to clean the radiator up and blow it out. Anyway, let's get this wood in the roll going. Now you want to back up into your corn, go backwards. That way you 
It's a very he helpful tool because this corn st stubble, see how fine it is? Well, the radiator sucks it up in there, and if you don't keep it blown out, I'll show you what it'll do. See that mess? Well, that radiator. Up. Keep that clean. Like, uh, like I said, this is, if you're going to be planting flute plots, you got to know this stuff. And I'm glad to share it with you. Like I say, I've put screen wire on that <coughs> and everything. <coughs> and another thing, I got one ton trucks. I've had pickups, I've had everything. But the best working tool, farm tool, <laughs> hands down is a cargo van you can put everything you got in there and it, if it starts raining or in climate weather it's out of the weather and if a pickup everything you got soaking wet stop at a bar <laughs> it might not be yours no more though to me a van far exceeds the pickup This gives you, when you walk across this field, what the odds of finding an antler. Uh, found that first shed where that red flag is. I only found two in that entire cornfield. It's, uh, but that's the way it goes. But, uh, I just wanted to share that. Two sheds, one matching, one side that matched 75 yards away, and the other one I never found. So, well, we're about to finish this up, and uh, we got a couple more rows to, to uh, oh, cut, and we'll be ready to start some tillage and be 2021 food plot season has begun. Well, that's. A few ears that I picked up off all this field wasn't a whole lot and then there's still some now here's a situation this is where the turkeys will come in here and the, oh the coon probably and whatever will get that leftover corn residue but I got most of the cobs and as I said that there's one right there but uh, we really were blessed with the consumption of what went on in this field. Yeah, that there. Now what we're going to do 
I'm gonna shuck that corn or take it off the cob and it don't take long and I used to do that when I was a kid uh, for the chickens and stuff like that and so we'll get at that and then we'll see just how much corn minus the cob that was actually that we picked up out of that field. What you had to do is keep this camera and this actual on site not taken off. Uh, I'm going to dump that out and I'm going to take, take that corn off the cob by hand and it goes pretty fast and uh, so uh, then we'll see exactly how much corn approximately there was left there bushel wise. This don't take long. But I want to do this in the field so you know it's not no Hollywood. And uh, as dry as that corn is it coming right off. It, it, it definitely comes off fast. Now what we'll do is this won't go to waste either. Because I can put it in a container and feed the squirrels at home for Deb. The, the more the more you put into yourself, so like I say, it don't take long to take that corn right off of there. I think more kids need to know how to do this. And I have my little grandson, he really enjoys it. And you guys got a kid in a turkey barn, you, you give him that. Of course, you could eradicate the bucket because that would make the noise, but they can see how many, how much corn they can give them something to do while they're watching turkeys. We'll actually come back and show you the results uh, here in a minute. Just about got it done. I think every American, and especially every Democrat American, that sits around with their hand out, I got a good exercise for that hand. Instead of putting it out like this, do something like this with it. Go get a job. There's no excuse for people to be unemployed today sitting on a corner with a sign out. They walk over there. They just don't want to work. Well, no matter if you paid them $100 an hour, they don't have any work skills. But they can sit here on this with their brain in their hand, and I'm sitting here with my grain in my hand. They sit there with their brain in their hand. Anyhow, <laughs> like I said, they used to show up with the thumb up their ass, now they show up with the brain in their hand. And uh, it's, the work ethic in this country has been so dumbed down, and all they want to do is play some kind of uh, sporting game. And, you know, the only people that you're actually seeing in the sporting arenas aren't the best. They were just a few that were selected. Because the best never got to go to college. But if they ever took those people out of the cornfield and put them on the football field or the basketball court or the baseball diamond, they'd see who the superstars were. And it wasn't the kid with the college education and scholarship that, 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 that got all the glamour. It was the guy that dug the ditches and, and uh, shoveled the shit that had the guts and glory that went off to protect this country. And uh, it was all started by learning how to work when you were a kid. I'd done this with my grandmother. <laughs> That's just something you were proud that you could do with them. And uh, anyhow, we almost got this, this uh, corn husk down, or what was it? Actually, what I call corn husky is when you tear the husk off. That's husking corn. This is actually, that's one, that's husking corn. This here is taking it off the cob, which sometimes can be a little bit more harder. But, uh, 
you can see, it goes pretty fast once you get your method down. Get a, get, get a notch in it, start rolling it, and it comes off that cob really fast. It does. Uh, just get a trough in it, then you can start doing this. That thing you know, it's clean. But, like I say, <laughs> we got politicians that have never led anything. <laughs> we had a president that didn't even deliver the newspaper, play Little League, mow a yard, celebrate Fourth of July or anything in America, and he became the president of this country. <laughs> Uh, I, <laughs> it really amazes me. Those people couldn't lead, couldn't lead me out of a one-room closet with the light on because they'd get lost without an aid, and I'd sit there and laugh at them. Anyway, what we're trying to do, not a political thing, is to show you how to recycle everything you can. And doing this to this corn, you can turn this in. Now, the pilgrims. What they did, was they'd take corn like this and they would replant it, but that's against the law today to take, because uh, you don't own the right to this corn. So uh, remember that. But anyway, we've about got her, got her in there. And, uh, it didn't take all that long. And like I said, this will go back into in the nature, uh, squirrel food, you can put it in a bag, take a sledgehammer, beat it, make crushed corn out of it, and uh, so the birds can eat it. Domestic, or not domestic birds, but city birds. This big corn, the turkeys, if I shoot a turkey uh, here, they'll probably have a gullet full of leftover kernels that are out here. There's not that many, but there are some. Anyway, we just about got her all done. And I wanted to show you what it looked like over a bushel of corn by taking it down off of there, off the cob. You didn't have a bushel of corn. To do this, on camera. Now, there's two things that we're going to end up here that most people don't understand because they never lived in the country and they never had to be country boy can survive. Okay. Now, there's how much corn we got that would have been in the belly of the deer or the coon. That'd have been it. So, now. We got something that Deb can feed her, the squirrels at with home, at home. Uh, we can crush it up, make bird feed out of it. And here's the other part. This is what gets interesting. See that pile of corn cobs right there? Right there. That's not corn cobs. You burn that in your fireplace, in your wood stove. Get your wood going. So, corn cobs. Many many fires were started in farmhouses to start the wood off those corn cobs. So you had two products. You couldn't burn the corn, but you could. Now you can burn the husk and the corn cob too. Well, we got about. I know we got three things out of this food plot. We got a one shed antler, a matching set, and corn for the squirrels. We fed the coons, we fed the turkeys, we fed the deer. Uh, squirrels have been running in and out of here I've seen. Uh, the four-legged kind. There's probably been a couple two-legged ones in here too. But uh, anyway, that's it from the non-typical and as we glass around, as we, as we pan around here, getting ready for 2021 food plotting. That's it. April 21st, the day before Earth Day.